Despite the heavy death toll and destruction of crucial infrastructure and warnings by international aid organizations, Israel has continued with its assault on Rafah. What will be the impact? The results of Pakistan's elections are out, although some of it has been challenged. But meanwhile, who's likely to form the government? This is the Daily Debrief. These are your stories for the day. And before we go any further, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. Over half the population of Gaza took refuge in Rafah in the southern part of the enclave over the past few months due to Israel's genocidal assault. Now Israel is attacking Rafah despite warnings that it will have a catastrophic impact on the over 1 million people taking shelter there. Scores have already been killed and the death toll is likely to increase as Israel enjoys complete impunity. For more details on what is happening, we go to Abdul. Abdul, thanks so much for joining us. A uh, developing story and a developing, in fact, a continuing catastrophe which is seem, uh, seems to be worsening. But maybe could you first take us through what is happening as per the latest reports in Rafah? Well, as per the latest report in Rafah, uh, Israeli forces uh, kind of bombarded uh, the enclave uh, in last, uh, almost uh, throughout the night, you can say. Uh, and uh, as per the reports, more than uh, 67 people have been reportedly being killed. There, are, of course, the number of people killed will increase because uh, the debris are there and uh, the, uh, the the compilation of the actual uh, casualties on the ground will take some time to come. Uh, the, everyone knows that Grafa is a place where most of the Palestinians who have been forced to displace from the rest of the Gaza where are residing and therefore the density of the region has increased uh, many fold it means uh, around 1.2 1.4 million of palestinians are living there and uh, and therefore uh, bo any bombardment would mean that a large number of people uh, would be killed there is also a plan apparently of a uh, ground offensive which israel has claimed that it will carry out in the region that would mean uh, 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 that will mean devastation for the Palestinians living there. Already uh, in the uh, in uh, Sunday night uh, and Monday morning uh, attacks, uh, the the basic uh, places like hospitals, mosques, the tents uh, were targeted, uh, and uh, 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 these casualties coming from these areas. And um, there are also uh, uh, serious uh, concerns raised by uh, the WHO, raised by uh, other uh, humanitarian agencies like Bo uh, Doctors Without Bo Borders, which have claimed that these bombardments and proposed ground offensive in Rafah would mean that Palestinians, of course, they have nowhere else to go all this while because they're, they're, they can't move to Egypt, they can't move to uh, in the northern parts of uh, Gaza, therefore they are basically confined in a in a, a small territory which is bombed from air and uh, the ground offensive uh, is also proposed so overall the situation is quite um, uh, precarious at the ground at this moment in rafa and a further uh, offensive will lead to further deterioration of the humanitarian condition uh, in in the territory all right, Abdul. Uh, human rights agencies, aid agencies have been warning for a long time against this kind of an assault. They've been saying that the situation is dire. So could you maybe take us through what will be the kind of humanitarian impact of this kind of an offensive? Well, as I said before, because this is a highly densely populated region at this moment, and there is hardly any empty space in that uh, uh, 21 square kilometer territory, uh, it, it would mean that any uh, bombing would mean large number of casualties. So the so-called uh, concerns expressed by countries like U.S. and other Western countries that Israel should carry out attack, but should with uh, attempts to kind of reduce the uh, civilian casualties. Of course, that is not going to happen uh, because of the uh, the nature of the territory, uh, because of the density of the population there. Uh, this will also mean that the hospitals which we are there uh, uh, taking care of the large number of Palestinians who were displaced and wounded. 
suffering because of the lack of food, suffering because of the lack of sanitation, suffering because of the overcrowding of the camps uh, and uh, uh, no uh, potable water to drink and so on and so forth, will have further complications because if there is a ground offensive and there is a bombing, of course, uh, whatever uh, minimum uh, services are available, uh, including the medical care, will all be uh, dysfunctional. Um, at least uh, kind of uh, those hospitals which are located near the densely populated areas and which are already, by the way, all the hospitals are overcrowded. But if those hospitals which are uh, immediately uh, uh, located in the, to the densely populated refugee colonies or the sh uh, shelters, they will be uh, hugely impact uh, affected. Given the experience uh, which uh, the North uh, hospitals and the other humanitarian uh, services uh, had in the northern Gaza or in other parts of Gaza during Israel's ground offensive, it seems uh, Israel will not shy away from targeting uh, these uh, facilities and that would mean further um, complete destruction of whatever remaining uh, health facilities and services are there. Of course, this is a, a region which is close to Egyptian border through which most of the humanitarian aid was uh, uh, crossing into uh, Gaza. Uh, bombing and ground offensive would mean that even that movement of that aid will also be severely uh, affected uh, if, uh, if the ground offensive proceeds the way it is already uh, air bomb bombings have affected uh, that. So it, it, overall, it would be a very uh, a dangerous situation for Palestinians. They are already in danger, but this will be, this will multiply that danger uh, many times. And, and uh, it seems that Israel does not care uh, because uh, all the concerns raised by different agencies, different countries even, has not uh, stopped Israel from uh, carrying out the airstrikes on uh, Sunday night and Monday morning. Well, thank you for that update, but do stay back. We'll come to you for our next story. The counting of ballots for Pakistan's elections has been completed, though some legal challenges remain before the final results. Meanwhile, independents backed by the PTI, that is the party of former Prime Minister Imran Khan, have emerged as the single largest group. However, they may struggle to form the government. Meanwhile, negotiations continue between the two establishment parties, that's the Pakistan People's Party and the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, led by former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. We go back to Abdul for a sense of the latest developments. Abdul, we last talked about Pakistan the day after the elections when results were beginning to uh, trickle in. Even at that time, the trend was kind of evident and it has actually been solidified. So maybe take us through what are the final results first. Well, Prashant, the, the problem is this is yet not the final result. Right. Uh, out of 265 contested uh, seats, um, some of them are still pending because uh, the candidates have gone to court and courts have uh, ordered stay uh, on the uh, declaration of final results. So whatever results are there, according to that, uh, uh, PTI-led uh, independents, PTI-backed independents still uh, have the largest share of the seats. They have around 101 uh, seats. Um, uh, PMLN, uh, Pakistan Muslim League, uh, Nawaz Sharif, basically has those who are considered to be the favorite, uh, both by the establishment and uh, as per the allegations made, as uh, push made by other agencies, has only able to secure around 75 seats. Uh, uh, PPP, Pakistan People's Party, uh, 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 led by Bilawal Bhutto, has basically got around 54, 55 seats. And uh, the, the surprise was MQM, uh, uh, Mutahida Qawmi Movement, which is a regional party in Sindh, in pa uh, Pakistan. It has got 17 seats, which is a huge number, given the fact that in the last National Assemb Assembly, it was a smaller, a small player. So, uh, of course, other seats, there are other smaller parties which have gone, uh, got some seats. Um, and they, but this is the larger uh, uh, picture at this moment. Uh, as far as the uh, provincial assemblies are concerned, because apart from the national assembly, there were elections also held for four provincial as uh, assemblies. And in that too, uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa uh, and Punjab, uh, PTI-led candidates, PTI-backed, sorry, back, PTI-backed candidates have secured 
at least in kp full majority but they are leading uh, uh, in punjab as well which is the largest province in punjab uh, in sindh ppp has got majority and may form government in baluchistan uh, uh, there is a hung uh, uh, assembly so this is the uh, situation at this moment well abdul the situation you describe broadly says the pti backed independents were of course uh, they are not really bound to uh, any uh, party per se although they have uh, commitments but are the bigger are the biggest force in many of these places but what really happens regarding government formation because i guess that is important question well uh, as per the uh, pakistan's constitution uh, anyone uh, any party or a group which has a majority in the national assembly majority of seats will be uh, forming the government of course but uh, the majority 134 in the popularly contested uh, uh, seats and if you add the reserve there are 70 reserve seats which are allocated as per the proportion of seats a, a party has won in the national assembly uh, 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 if you club them together 168 69 is the majority mark and at this moment no party or coalition uh, seems to be reaching there there are talks going on at this moment between pmln and ppp uh which were which were uh, which had a coalition which ra- ran for uh, uh around one and a half years uh, uh, before the elections were held um, uh, and there is a attempt to recreate that same kind of coalition of course nawaz sharif is uh, likely to be heading uh, that coalition if that happens uh backed by other smaller parties but pti has also claimed and that they are ready to form government at this moment and they are exploring the possibility uh, the one option they have is to kind of merge all the uh, uh, pti backed candidates with a smaller party which has say one or two seats in the parliament and claim uh, uh, the reserve seats accordingly and if they get the share of reserve seat um, they will be very much closer to the majority mark but yet not be there completely so at this moment there is only way possible is the coalition of some kind between either between pti uh, merging with a smaller party and then finding support from other uh, 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 smaller parties or PD, uh, uh, pmln and uh, ppp coming together with support of other smaller parties forming a government at this moment it is not clear yet which uh, which party or group will be uh, uh, kind of will be successful in forming a, a coalition government uh, but one thing is clear that there will be a coalition government as far as the assemblies are concerned of course uh, kp pti will form a government and in sindh ppp that is clear but punjab assembly which is the largest as i said before again had the similar situation where PTI can merge with a smaller party and then claim the reserve seats and then it will be closer 186 seats which is the majority to uh, form a government and that is there is a higher chances of that rather than PLM uh, forming a government even in alliance with PPP because the number of seats PPP have got in Punjab is not enough for them to kind of have uh, enough number of reserve seats so it seems at this moment of course baluchistan will be uh, uh, it's completely unclear what will happen in baluchistan so uh, this is by and large is the situation at this moment there is tense negotiations going on between ppp and pmln to form a government and given the political uh, commentary which is coming uh, uh, from the ground it seems that they are backed by the uh, uh, political forces in the country including the powerful military Uh, uh, uh to kind of come together and form a government but um, i think we should wait and watch what happens uh, uh when all the results are out and there is a, a clarity about the coalitions which are being formed abdul thank you so much for the update that's all we have in today's daily brief we'll be back with a fresh episode tomorrow in the meanwhile do visit our website peoplesdispatch.org follow us on all the social media platforms and if you're watching this on youtube please hit the subscribe button Thank you.